Well, hey friends, today we talked about the good news of, of God coming into this world and the messenger Gabriel coming to Mary. And he really, he really dealt with some aspects that I think is important. Uh, the, the primary one is uh, God is with you, that you're not alone in this, that God's saying, I'll go with you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll go with you. And God really communicated this to Mary. And then he made some promises. He said to Mary that um, Jesus would be called the Son of God, which he was many times, most poignantly so at the end of his life on the cross when the Roman centurion, who'd been part of the crucifixion, said, surely this man is the Son of God. What a haunting echo of the promise of, of Gabriel that had to be when, when that Roman centurion said that. I wonder if she remembered uh, the words of the angel saying he will be called the son of God. Indeed, Jesus is the son of God. And what it brings us to is our final point, which is the word of God will never fail. That God's word always returns bountiful, fruitful, and alive. And uh, we saw that in this, that Jesus Christ even went on at the end of his life to say, surely I will be with you to the very end of the age. The promise to Mary is given to us that Jesus will be with us. And the question that really we need to drive home is this. It comes down to one central point. Will you in your life bear the son of God into the world around you? Will you carry the son of God and bear him into the world just as Mary did? We are people who are called. We are equipped by the Holy Spirit, giving gifts and talents and wisdom and discernment by him. Will we live into that calling and courageously obey and live like Mary did and say, may it be unto me even as you have said. You have said, those are the words I love about Mary. May it be unto me as you have said. Her life would be turned upside down, but oh, the purposeful goodness of God in calling her to this task. He's called you to the same thing, to bring the Son of God into this world and bear him forward for people to encounter God. My friends, the question to you is how will you respond to the calling of God when he taps you because you are called, you are gifted, and you are an essential part of what the gospel is doing in this world. Question one, what is your first memory of having to do something alone? Maybe it was staying home alone, going to the store alone. Maybe you flew on an airplane alone and you got escorted to the different things. Don't mind the flickering lights. I'm good. <laughs> um, what was your first memory of having to do something alone? Sometimes we get so familiar with a story we, uh, that we don't really sit down and think, think about it. Take a moment and try to put yourself in Mary's place. At her age, in that time, that time, that period of time, how do you think you would have responded to the angel when he told you such good but life-altering news? Read Matthew uh, 27, 45 to 56, and then answer this question. What stood out to you in that text? Read Matthew uh, 28, 16 to 20. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave some instructions to all of his followers. What were those instructions? Have you ever had people in your life who didn't keep their word? Mary had to lay down her plan, her agenda for her life to obey the calling of God to carry the Son of God into this world. So I want to ask you, how can you lay down your own plans, your own agendas to carry the Son of God, Jesus, in your own life? Be specific about it. Think of an incident, place, or relationship where you can lay down your agenda and follow faithfully God in mission. So, first question for our kids. Uh, discussion question, kids. Here's the first one. Uh, my daughter Bella has a pet bunny. If she ever has to feed him at night, she doesn't like to go out by herself. I know this. And she usually asks one of her brothers to come with her. Is there anything you have to do alone that scares you so bad? You're like, I don't want to do it.
when the angel appeared to Mary, he said, don't be afraid. How would you feel if an angel just showed up in your life? What would your feelings be? Mary was asked to do an amazing thing, to carry the Son of God and be his mom. Why do you think she had the courage to do it? This week's uh, community question is asking about kids ministry. Wednesday nights, our partnership with First Reform, GEMS, cadets, etc. Here's, here's what we do. Currently, we have incredible Sunday and Monday night uh, programming for our kids, three through fifth grade. And then we have great youth groups, six through 12th. Um, that's what we currently have. Um, why is there no other programming, you may ask? After, after the ages of three to fifth grade, we don't do like Sunday morning programming because we want everyone involved in groups. If you're a family and you're in a group, hopefully your kids are coming with you. When you go to groups, they're connecting, they're growing. Maybe they're having fun. They're not sitting through the whole study, but they're taking part in some way and being part of that fellowship. Um, groups is what we're doing. Uh, groups is how we're studying and learning and growing together. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, doing devotions. Uh, with your kids each week. We don't want to just sit and tell them story after story. We want you to do family time with kids and do the devotions. That's why we publish them. They will learn more from you and your example and time with them than they will from us. We believe it's worth investing in you, making sure you're doing those devotions with your kids. So since we want kids involved in the small groups, one of the things we've started doing is I have here the um, kids questions. We're going to start asking questions kids questions within the small group curriculum so that your kids have things to engage and answer. You can bring them in at this time to have them do the questions or you can start with kids questions and then lean into the adults and let them go run and play. Totally your call. We just want to include them. Um, so also, um, I think it's really important that kids see their faith at home. Let me be really honest. If you're coming into the house having drank too much and acted crazy all week, and then you take them to church, your kids aren't going to believe in Jesus. They're going to believe that you can pretend to be a Christian one day a week and then be a completely different person the other six. One of the reasons we're driving this home is because home is where change happens. Home is where we grow. We do really deep relationships. We just want you to have your kids there. I'm not saying you can't be broken. I'm just saying who you are, your kids will become. So be in the word of God. Be people who are Christians. And doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means you're working out your salvation with them. They see you learning and growing and they realize, ooh, I get to learn and grow too. They become vibrant Christians. We love having kids in our groups. I think what I love most about this teaching about uh, why I get so invested and like worked up about it is this. We never think that in a way we have something in common with Mary. We are called to carry the Son of God and bring him into this world. Um, what an awesome thing. What a gift that we get to carry the name Jesus Christ with us everywhere we go. We carry Jesus into our environments and we literally bring him and present him constantly to the world around us. My hope and prayer for you is that you take seriously, as Mary did, the role of bearing into this world the Son of God who lives within us by the power of his Holy Spirit. Grace, peace, and hope to you in this season. Hope you had a great time with groups and we'll talk to you later.